That last hanging does that guy up and down like he's on a rubber band. William's only weighs 134. Add me a couple of pounds for breakfast the way those guys always eat. That brings it up to 136. Keep it up and you'll get the spring out of it. We want this one's next boat. All right. Quit playing with that gallows. I'd expect us to do any work. Good out there, yelling. I'll get the sherry back to you, tramps. <laughs> they must respect for the press around here. How's the wife, Anthony? Better? Worse. We had to hang around all day and all night waiting for them to hang that cuckoo. Hard work, all right. Crank it for a dime. Hey, Schwartz, what do you do? Why me? What time is it, anyway? 4.30. Hey, me too. These cars are like wash rags. Let's chip in and get a new deck. These are good enough for me. I'm 80 cents out already. Faber, 105.9. Hey, take this phone. Ernie, you ain't doing anything. Uh, you guys crippled or something? Criminal court building, press room. Uh, just a minute, please. Hello, Sarge. The cube. Yeah, I phone. Anything doing? All right. Thank you, Sarge. Two turns. Say, Ernie, why don't you take your instrument into the library and play it? Hello. Is this the home of Mrs. F.C. Margolis? This is Mr. McHugh with the City News Bureau. Is it true, madam, that you were the victim of a peeping tom? Ask her if she's worth keeping at. Oh, no, madam, that ain't the right attitude to take. All we want is a fact. Tell her I can run up for an hour. Tell her to come over here. We'd like to reenact the crime. Just a minute, madam. Is it true, Mrs. Margolis, that you took the part of Lady Godiva for charity seven years ago? Hello. She cut off. What, her hair? Tell her I'll be right over. Yep. No, he'll be jumping it. Oh, oh, hello, Mr. Burns. No, Hilly hasn't shown up yet. Yeah, sure, Mr. Burns. Hello, Van Singer. I just had an interview with Williams. Over in that death house. That jail, that jail is reeking with germs. Oh, believe me, the Board of Health is going to hear about the conditions over there through my paper. It's amazing to me that those prisoners can live long enough to get home. What's the idea, Max? Say, is that the only telephone in this place? The only one but a mouthpiece. How many times have I got to tell you fellas to let my phone alone? You want to talk to a mouthpiece? Go and buy one, like I did. Whitney, 9,000. The germs of the mouth are the most contagious. Oh, shut up, Mr. Reed. Whitney, 9,000. What is this, a hospital? Yeah, Roy, how's your simple coming along? Hello, Sarge. McHugh. Anything done? Say. You don't have to use my desk for a garbage can, either. Say, how'd you like to stop stinking up this place with those antiseptics? Yeah, anything new on the hanging, Ben Sam? My deal, ain't it? Hey, zone I. What is it? Question before the house. Gentleman wants to know if there's anything new on the hanging. Oh, nothing special. Did you talk to the sheriff? Why don't you get your own news? Somebody ought to see the sheriff. Criminal court's press room. No, here they come to me. Oh, yes, Mr. Burns. What? I know, Mr. Burns. Uh, yes, Mr. Burns. 
Goodbye, Mr. Burns. Walter Burns for Hildy again. Something must have happened. I'll tell you what's happened. Hildy's quit. Oh, nurse. You know, Hildy's a fixture on the morning post. Yeah, he goes with the woodwork. Well, they told me he was going to quit. Say, this Walter Burns wouldn't let him quit. He'll find a way to keep him here somehow. Remember what he did to Fenton when he wanted to go to Hollywood? <laughs> Got him into a fight and had him thrown into jail for assault and battery. You mean a rewrite? Well, if he ain't quit, why ain't he here covering the hangar? I wish I could quit. Ready? Nurse Isabel Zobo. Z for zebra, O for onion, B for bat size, E for anything else, for, uh, L for, uh... Oh, don't tell him anybody. L for Listerine. Swedish masseuse, with rooms at 608 Inverness Avenue. Well, this dame was arrested tonight on complaint of a lot of angry wives. They claim she's been treating their husbands with electricity at a dollar a time. Well, the Swedish teeth is in again. I understand she massages them, too. Well, anyway, she's arrested. And the station house is full of her patients claiming she's innocent. Half the stock exchange is there, too, trying to provide bail. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Bain, 6800. Say, Ernie, why don't you take up electricity instead of that noise? Oh, it's got no future. Class? No, Mr. Burns. Hildy Johnson is. I'm not lying, Mr. Burns. <coughs> Walter acting like he'd burst a blood vessel. You playing golf, sir? No. Then I'll have to put another man on the job. In your hat, Duffy. I'm after that bunch of lily livered pockmarked marked peanut politicians who think they're running this town. And Hildy Johnson's the only man on the staff I can trust tonight. But we've got to have a... Uh, we've got man. to have Johnson. But you haven't got it. He's on the wagon. I ain't. You remember me? I was here last night with Mr. Bensley. Mr. Bensley's still here. Great. Hey, baby. You know, to get a look at Walter Burns' face when he hears of this. Oh, I'd write up for a year to see when he hears I'm getting married. <laughs> I've had it for two years to get a lot of what he says when I'm leaving this town. I've New York. <laughs> What's the matter? Oh, so that's why you got that. Walter Burns. That's why you're going to marry me. Walter Burns. That's why you're going to New York. To spite Walter Burns. Oh, honey, you're crazy. Now listen. Listen, did you ever come up out of a sewer... Honey, 
Did you ever come up? Did you ever come up out of a sewer and have the cool, fresh air hit you? Well, I did. And honey, you're the cool, fresh air. You've made a fresh air fiend out of me, dear. And I'm not going back there unless you send me. Then, Hildy, you go right up to Walter Burns and he's down. Well, and have him get his hands on me? That's why I've been hiding out at your place, to keep away from that double-crossing maniac. Tell you what I'll do. I'll resign by phone and they get a look at that snake's face. Oh, man. no, you don't. Here. With 501 bills? Uncle sent it to me for a wedding present. I wasn't going to give it to you until we got there. But you take it. And after you take me home, you get the ticket. Instead of getting married tonight, we'll get married tomorrow. Instead of going to New York tomorrow, we'll go to New York tonight. <laughs> Yes, I do, and throw the oil under the one that's not 24 hours earlier, that's all. Oh, what is it, Mother? Do you know what I think? What? I think you must be a sort of irresponsible type, or you wouldn't do things this way. Now, Mother, you stop thinking on my field. He didn't do a one blessed thing to help us get away. You better get busy. Okay. on the lake to test that trick diving suit. That suit was about as waterproof as your straw hat. Filled so fast, it took me half an hour to pull me up. It was lucky I only went deaf. Didn't I go to the expense of hiring an airplane to take you up so you could get your hearing back? And at the further expense of driving the pilot so I landed in the middle of a strike massacre at Heron, Illinois? You scooped the whole world of the story. You made yourself the envy of every newspaper man alive. Oh, well, it was worth it, sir. You think 
reckon if I did get ridden out of town in the rain? Yeah. They pull them holes in a hat that cost me six bucks. And charged on the expense account of fifteen. And got away with it. <laughs> <laughs> ah, those were the days. You'll certainly have a lot to tell the kids. Yeah. What kids? You're getting married. No, why not? A guy's got to settle down sometime. Get a home and wife and... I say, kids that hold it all together. That's right. I was never big enough to let a nice girl reform me so I could stay in a two-room love nest at night with a wife and kids while the fellas were out having a lot of fun. Oh, dear. Marriage does make a respectable citizen out of a man. It must be grand. None of this idiotic jumping around at all hours and having to be on the inside of all the crazy excitement in this town. Ah, the 515 out to some quiet suburb. A home-cooked dinner every night at exactly seven and by ten in bed. Unless, after the tapioca, the wife has a few friends in for a neighborly chat. I don't blame you, Hildy. It sounds great. Excuse me a minute, will Come on here, sporty deal my boy. Don't let that deck get cold. See if you can deal me a decent hand, will you? Oh, what the shoes? Any news? I've just been over to the death house. Did you hear what Williams said to the priest? Oh, forget it. Yeah, I know, I know. The paper's full of the hanging. We ain't got room for the ads. What did Williams say? He said that... Come on, boys, ante up. Ante up. I've ante twice already. He said to the priest that he was innocent. He'll start crying in a minute. Why don't you send the poor nuts some roses like that girl of his, Molly Malloy? Oh, now, there you are. There's an idea. She thinks she's innocent, too. Oh, you fellas don't understand. Now, Before I... you go on, wouldn't you, would you mind running down to the corner and getting me a hamburger sandwich? Personally, my feeling is... Ain't that two hamburgers like a good fellow? Now, my feeling is that Williams is of the dual personality kind. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Like the Dolly sister. Yeah, tell us of the Tribune. Great. It's on account... Of the way his head is shaped. It's a typical case. Oh, ask him to put a lot of ketchup on them sandwiches. I thought you fellas might be interested in the psychological end. Make my plain lettuce on gluten bread. Get me a sandwich too, wouldn't you? I raise you. Well, it's dropped right now. But they where am I going to get the dough for all these eats? Oh, charge it. You got a badge, haven't you? What's a good for? Four hamburgers and a lettuce. I'm gluten. Uh, uh, hello. Oh, hello, Mr. Burns. I know we haven't seen him, Lee. Hi, Burns. Look at you, Burns. Burns on the way. I talk to him, will you, Hildy? Let paranoid to take a sweet kiss for himself. Come on, Ernie, sound your age. Goodbye forever. Listen, Hilly, will you do me a personal favor and talk to Walter? He's been calling up about nine million times. What's the matter, Hilly? Are you afraid of him? I'll talk to that maniac with pleasure. Hello, Mr. Burns. What's that, Mr. Burns? Why, your language is shocking, Mr. Burns. Say, listen, you crazy baboon. Get a pencil and paper and take this down and get it straight because it's important. This is the Hilly Johnson curse. The next time I see you, no matter where I am or what I'm doing, I'm going to walk right up to you and hammer on that monkey skull of yours till it rings like a Chinese gong. Oh, boy. That's telling them. Listen. Hey, I'll just have you see No, I ain't going to cover the hanging. I wouldn't cover Washington Cross the Delaware for you. That'd be did it all over again. Never mind the Vaseline, Jacko. It won't do you any good this time because I'm going to New York. I didn't tell you that, did I? But if you know what's good for you, you'll stay west of Gary, Indiana, because the Johnson never forgets. 
And that boy that would have known is telling the managing editor. Well, why'd you quit? Getting married. See those three to New York tonight. Tonight? Yes, sir. What do you mean, three? Me and my girl and her darling ma. Oh, look, he's in love. So, two of us say, uh, is she a white girl? Has she got a good shape? Does Walter know you're getting married? Does he know? Shook hands like a pal over to throw me a farewell dinner. That's his favorite joke. Farewell dinner. He poisons people at him. Hey, Tucker, 2164, will you? Yeah, he got me into Pollock, Mike. Showed me full of cheap booze. I'd have been there, yeah, if it hadn't been for the window. You imagine that guy trying to break up my marriage after shaking hands? Oh, hello, Peggy. How are you, darling? Hmm? Well, I know, but... Oh, you bet I resigned right in his face. Good night. Yeah. yeah. What? 1118 tonight. The press room. Just dropped in to say goodbye to the boys. Yeah. No, not a chance, honey. I got a taxi waiting. Yeah. Ten minutes. Bye-bye, honey. Hey, where's the wedding? In New York. So you guys ain't gonna have any fun with it. Those fake warrants are kidnapping the bride with me. Everybody's getting a New York craze. I think it's a stinking village. You want to count, Hildy? They tell me all the reporters in New York use lipstick. Remember that one last summer? With a topper? <laughs> oh, what day was the man? Could any of you gentlemen tell me where the telegraph office is? You want to count, Hildy? You'll be talking like that. Which one of those New York papers are you going to work for? None of them. Who wants to work in a newspaper? Now the whole boat's full of damn different bad gin. They wheedle all the all of them. What are you going in for? The movie? The advertising business. $150 a week. What? $150 what? There's the contract. Have you guys got anything better to do down there? It is $150. You're going to miss a sweet hanging. Not a... He's going to write poetry about my lady's panties. Can you imagine? Punching a time clock. Sitting around with a lot of stuffed shirts, talking statistics. Why, you'll be like a fire horse tied to a milk wagon. Listen to who's talking. Journalists, peeking through keyholes, running after fire engines like a lot of coach dogs, waking people up in the middle of the night, asking what they think of you so easy. Stealing pictures off of old ladies of their daughters to get attacked at Grove Park. A lot of dandy buddies keep swimming around with holes in their pants. Holding nickels from office boys. And for what? So a million hired girls and motorman's wives will know what's going on. Yeah, your girl must have handed you that line. I don't have to have anybody tell me about a newspaper. I've been a newspaper man for 15 years. Cross between a bootlegger and a galoofer. If you want to know something, you'll all end up on a copy desk. Gray-headed, humpback, slobs, dodging debt collectors when you're 90. You'll be out on the street the minute your contract's up. Not me. My girl's uncle owns the business. Has he got a lot of jack? Choking him. What do you think he'd give us for a wedding present? A dozen doilies. <laughs> Five hundred dollars in cash. There ain't five hundred in cash. There it is. That's what it cost to get those tickets in New York. Ooh. Let me count it. Oh, no, you don't. Just a minute. Just a minute, boys. What about a little bite? Garam. Jenny. Oh, hey. 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 America. Can I wash up now, please? Yes. This place is beginning to smell like a like an owl's foot. You don't want to wash up on a night like this. Jenny, this is a holiday. Come on, give us a kiss. You really don't keep away from me. What's the matter? Ain't I your fellow anymore? Oh. Tell you what we'll do, Jenny. You and I will go around and say goodbye to everybody in the building. Oh, but we can't carry this all over. Come on, Jenny. Come on. Hey! Look! Come on, Jenny. You and I will say goodbye to the woods. Oh, we'll do something. Why, I own this building. Well, see you around again, Jenny. Look here, fellas. Oh, 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 fellas, now. Hey. Who jumped that out of this window? We promised not to. Yeah. Who threw it? Judge Mankiewicz threw it. He was in it with his robes on, playing fireman. Come on now, fellas. I know who it was. It was Hildy Johnson, wasn't it? Where is he? Out with a lady. I swear I don't know what to do with you, fellas. I have a darn good mind to take this press room away from you. Oh. Da -da 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 -da. Wouldn't that be too bad? Well, the place is so full of cockroaches, you can't walk. 
Personally, I don't give two hoots. But how do you suppose it looks to have a lot of hoodlums yelling and throwing things out of the window? There's someone in that get up. How do you suppose he feels listening to all this rebellion? A lot you care how he feels. We're doing everything possible to, to get your whole ticket re-elected next week. Yes, when Earl Williams drops through that trap tomorrow, it means a million votes. Can we help it if the people rise to support this administration stand against the Red Menace? Personified by Mr. Earl Williams, the guy who loses the job he's held for 14 years, joins the parade of the unemployed, and because he's goofy from lack of food, waves a red undershirt. Williams is a dangerous radical, and he killed a policeman. Williams is a poor bird who has the tough luck to kill a colored policeman in a, in a town where their colored boat's important. And they're hanging Andy Deaver in the morning. Keep your shirt on, Pinky. And I don't want to hear any more of that Pinky stuff. I got a name, see? Peter B. Hartman. Stop it! Pinky, how's that look to the voters? Like I had sore eyes or something. Just a minute, fellas. Just a minute. Alfie, how about the favor that uh, certain party is asking? Once and for all, will you hang this person at 5 a.m. instead of 7? It can't hurt you, and we can make the city addition. Roy, you can't hang a man in his sleep just to please the newspaper. No, but you can keep postponing the hanging so it'll come just before the election. Yes. Yeah. With this new alien that's coming in, how do we know there'll be a hanging? Yes. Yeah. What if this professor finds he's insane or something? Yes. Yeah. Well, they won't find he's insane. No? No. Because he ain't. William is as sane as I am. Saner. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Now, here's a resume of the situation. The newspapers have got to put their shoulders to the wheel. They've got to impress on these Bolsheviks that a death warrant for Earl Williams is a death warrant for every bomb thrown on American Red in this town. This hanging means more to the people of our fair city today. That's a statement, Jimmy. Why don't you go home? All right, you'll just get scooped. Oh. This would reform the Reds with a rope. That's our slogan. You can quote me if you want to. Sheriff Hartman pledges. Oh, be oil. We've been printing this chestnut for weeks. Ain't you going to use that? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Give me the desk. This is Bensinger. The sheriff refuses to move for hanging up a minute. No, I won't. That hanging's coming off exactly as per schedule. Seven o'clock in the morning and not a minute sooner. That's such a thing as being humane, you know. All right. All right. Let's wait till you want a favor. Give me a rewrite. <laughs> Jake, you lead on the hanging. And say, Jake, don't use Hartman's name in this at all. Just say the sheriff. Why can't this jerk these guys at a reasonable hour so we can get some sleep? This, uh, this new alienist, Dr. Mac J. Engelhofer. That's right, from Vienna. He's going to examine Williams at the request of the, uh, United Federation for World Betterment. Oh, my, one of the biggest. Author of that book, The Personality Plan. And where to put it? At a dime, just autograph the copy for me. Did you find his initials in your pants, too? Wait. There's more. That doctor's the 14th pair of whiskers they've sent in on this case. Say, those ailing this makes me sick. All they do is push it and send your bill for 500 bucks. Give me the dead. I'll take. Here's the situation on the eve of the hanging. Hello, this is Murphy. More slap on the hanging. From the jail, the municipal buildings, the railroad terminals, and elevated stations to prepare for the expected general uprising of radicals at the hour of execution. Sheriff Hartman just put 400 more relatives on the payroll to protect the city against the red menace which is leaving Moscow in a couple of minutes. Up a dime. Sheriff Hartman, uh, uh, the, the sheriff, has just received four more letters threatening his life. If he's going to answer by a series of raids. Prove to the voters that the Red Menace is on the square. Sheriff Hartman has just written himself four more letters threatening his life. Yes, yes, I know he wrote them on account of the misspelling. 
Stop. That's all, Jake. Yeah, except the condemned man ate a hearty dinner. Oh, uh... Mock turtle soup, chicken pot pie, hash brown potatoes, combination salad, and pie a la mode. The doomed man ate a hearty meal as follows. Noodle soup, roast the beef, sweet of potato, cranberry sauce, strawberry pie, and a great big hunk of pastrami. Statement from who? The sheriff? Oh, quote him for anything you want. He can't read. Ruler calling. Nothing new on the hanging. And say, Jake, get this in as a big favor for me, will you? The whole meal was furnished by Charlie Apfel and uh, Apfel. App, A for adenoids, P for psychology, F for phenomen, E for epilepsy, and L for, uh, um, L for, um, uh, lay an egg. Certainly this is Ben Singer talking. Well, the proprietor of Apple wants to see you restaurant. That's it, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Nicky Bensinger's going in for Petty Graft again. That means a new hat for somebody. I understand that's how Bensinger gets all his clothes. Sure, the greasy spoon gave him that overcoat when George Kidd Q for us one. <laughs> <laughs> if they ever stop hanging people, they'll probably go naked. Why don't you make a poem out of it, Roy? Hello, Mike. Uh-oh, there's a gleam in her eye. Don't look at me, sweetheart. I never said a word. Oh, Kid, how's the old Selena again? Sure, then how are you, Molly? Been looking for you, Clamp. Yeah, those are swell roses you sent, Earl. What do you want done with them tomorrow morning? A lot of wise guys, ain't you? What do you want in here? To tell you what I think of you. All of you. Keep your skirts on. You was worth breaking my fingernails on. I'd tell your face wide open. What's the matter, sweetheart? What are you sore about? Now, wasn't that a swell story we gave you? Yeah. You crumbs have been making a fool out of me long enough. She oughtn't to be allowed in here. Yesterday I caught her using the drinking cup. Never said I loved Earl Williams and was willing to marry him on the gallows. You made that up. About my being his soulmate and having a love nest with him. You've been sucking around that cuckoo ever since he's been in the death house. Everybody knows you're his affinity. That's a rotten lie. I met Mr. Williams just once in my life. He was wandering around in the rain without his hat and coat on like a sick dog. The day before the shooting. I went up to him like any human being would and asked him what was the matter. He told me about being fired after working at the same place for 14 years. I took him up to my room because it was warm there. Oh. <laughs> Put that on your Victrola. Just because you want to fill your lying papers with a lot of dirty scam, you got to torture him. Make a tramp out of me. Got a match? I tell you, he just sat there talking to me all night. Never once laid a hand on me. Uh-oh. In the morning, he went away. And I never saw him again until that day at the trial. Tell us what you told the jury. <laughs> oh, come on, laugh. <laughs> I'd like to know some curses bad enough for your greasy souls. Sure, I was his witness, the only one he had. Witness? Yes, me, Molly Malloy, a common streetwalker. The only one with nerve enough to stand up for him. That's why you're persecuting me. Because he treated me decent, not like an animal, and I said so. When do you dance, kid? This is the press room. Where are Betty? Why don't you go and see your boyfriend? You better hurry. He's left a call for 7 a.m. You wonder a bull of lightning don't come down and strike you all dead. What was that? They're fixing up a pain in the neck for your boyfriend. Oh, oh what's the idea? Oh, oh no, no. Don't, don't get hysterical. Oh, shame on you. Why, I didn't say anything. A poor, crazy little guy. I never did anybody any harm. Sitting out there alone this minute with the angel of death beside him. And you crack it too. Say, hey, listen, if you don't shut up, I'll give you something to cry about. Oh, keep your dirty hands off of Come me. Come on, outside. Outside, Sam. Come on, get out of here. Get out. Take it on the lamb. Say, listen, you're greedy, so. <laughs> Well, do you guys want to play some more poker?
Here now, tickets for the hanging. Two for each paper. What do you mean, two? What do you want to do, take your family? Uh, hey, listen, Pete, our boss wants a couple for the advertising department. I promise to pay This ain't the Follies, you know. Oh. Big hard and pinky. I'm getting tired of your editors using these tickets to get advertising accounts. You got a lot of nerve. Everybody knows you use them to get in socially. Yeah, you had the whole Union League Club over at the last hanging. Trying to suck in with the swells, huh? I suppose you'll wear a monocle tomorrow morning. Now, boys, that ain't the way to talk. If any of you want a couple of extra tickets, I'll be more than glad to take care of you. But for goodness sake, don't kill Hiya, boys. We cleaned up. Here, here, here. Get that copy of the Morning Post out of here. Look here, Johnson. What do you mean by throwing things out of the window? Johnson, what do you mean by throwing things out of the window? Who do you think you are? Who wants to know? Who you think that you're all about to run this town? Well, I'm going to send a bill to the Post tomorrow for all the wreckings that's been committed around here in the last year. Now, how do you like that? That's swell. You know what else you can do? What? Yes. <laughs> you stick your own nose to this building tomorrow, I'll have you arrested. Well, that's almost worth staying for. And I'll tell you something else, and you can pass it on to Walter Burns. The Post gets no tickets for this hanging on account of the lies that they've been printing. Well, listen, you pot roast, if I want to go to your hanging out ghost, see, and I'll sit in a box. Oh, no, you won't. I'll have to tell half of what I know. You don't know anything. I happen to know who occupied room 602 at a certain hotel the night before the last hanging. Uh. Oh. <laughs> that hotel crack has doubled them up. <laughs> Say, Sheriff. That's room. Just what hotel was that? <clears throat> For you, Sheriff. Sheriff Hoffman talking. Oh, hello, dear. It must be Irma. No, I can't come home. I got too many things to do. Getting ready for the hanging. Why don't you take him out to your house and hang him? I'll call you up later, Irma. It is Irma. I got to see an alienist. No, alienist. Not for me, for William. Last <laughs> <laughs> room. Who? Hey, Hilly, your girl. Hello, Hill. Hello, Peggy. How are you, Darren? Yes, stay and wait, Janet. How about my plate, Peter? Hamburger for me. I ordered one, didn't I? You did not. That's why it wasn't showing. Why, darling, what's the matter? I distinctly said gluten. Listen, darling, I just dropped in to say goodbye to the fellows. Do you remember I told you? Say, will you guys talk or something? All right. right. Oh, 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 oh. Yes, I've got a taxi waiting. Hey, go easy on that ketchup. I'm responsible for it. We got, I've got the tickets right in my pocket. Now, listen, dear, if you talk like that, I'm going to go right out and jump in the lake. I swear I will, because I can't stand it. Listen. We're listening. I love you. I said I love you. Oh, give him a break, Ernie. Well, that's more like it. You feel better now? Well, smile. Say something. You know what I want to hear. Tell me you love me. Come on, tell me you love me. Tell him you love me, and we'll all go to sleep. That's the stuff. Yep. Listen, honey, will you wear that little blue straw hat? Wait a minute, I'll see. Well, are you happy now? Well, I bet you're not as happy as I am. Well, I bet you anything you want. All right, dear. Yeah. Five minutes. Bye bye. Hildy, here's Warner again. Tell him to give us a rest, will you? Oh. Now you're just breaking a nuisance out of yourself. What's the idea of calling up on us? What? No, I'm through with newspapers. I'm going to New York tonight, right now, this minute. Oh. Uh... Hey, what are you doing? Hey, Piggy! Stick that on your souvenir! Hey, Hilly, you'll get us in an awful jam! The board calls up again, tell him to put it in writing, and send it to Hildebrand Johnson, Waterbury Adams Corporation, 735 Fifth Avenue, New York City. Please, Sherry. Huh? Please. Oh, excuse me, Professor. I ain't afraid to die. I ain't afraid. Don't work too much the first day, kid. Goodbye, Anson. I'll drop your line, Hildy, and let you know what Walter says. So long, Hildy. Be careful of that treacherous New York weather, Hildy. So long, Grant. Don't forget to send us a postal card. Don't forget to drop in and see us if you ever come back, kid. Well, we see you again, Hildy. Riding in a Rolls Royce. Giving out interviews on success. <laughs> hmm. 
Now we shall reenact the crime. Uh, give you a gun, Sheriff. A gun. Now imagine that I am the policeman. You understand? I am the policeman. Now where exactly did you stand? Show me. Hey, Hildy, I hope you got a return trip ticket. You'll be back next week. And then what did you do? Dementia free Goodbye, you wage slaves. When you're calling up fire escapes, getting kicked out of front doors, eating Christmas dinners and one arm joints, don't forget your old pal, Hildy Johnson. As the road beyond unfold. got the gun. He ran up eight flights of stairs to the infirmary, got out through the skylight. He must have slid down the rain pipe to the street. Murphy, give me the dead. No, I tell you, no one knows where he got it. Call you back. No clue yet to Earl Williams' whereabouts. The Crime Commission is offering a $10,000 reward for the capture of Earl Williams. Call you back. Hello? Hello, here's a feature for you. Tear bomb. Yes, yes, tear bomb. Criminals cry for it. If the mayor wants me, he knows where I am. This bomb went off accidentally in the hands of Sheriff Hartman's bombing squad. What went off? The following deputy sheriffs were taken to the emergency hospital. A fine pair with a friend you are. Any Jake Glazer? After all I've done for you. Herman Wallstein. And things like that in the paper. Sidney Matt That's Berg. That's you for you. And Danny Coo. Kruger calling. McKill, give me the desk. A man answering Williams' description was seen boarding a southbound Cottage Grove Avenue car by motorman Julius A. Lindbergh. Side lights on a manhunt. Yeah, Lindbergh. I thought it would make a swell feature on account of the name. This is Richard West, Jr., age 55, scrub lady. While at work scrubbing the eighth floor of the Commerce Building, was shot in the left leg by one of Sheriff Hartman's special deputies. I'll uh, rush right uh, after it. Uh, 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 uh. Let's go, lady. Will he go get in the get out? All I can get the sheriff let him out because he can fought for him. Where do you suppose Williams got that gun? Give me water for us, quick. Hello, Walter. Hildy. I just got the whole story from Jacoby. Exclusive? Right, that's a pep. Only guess that's to cost me 260 bucks, see? Don't waste time. Give me the story. I'm telling you. First, I had to give Jacoby all the money I had on me, and it wasn't exactly mine, and I want it back. How'd he get the gun? You hear what I said about the money? Yes, go on. All right, then. Boy, this is the jailbreak of your dreams. This profound thinker from Vienna decided to make Williams reenact the crime. Well, well, well. Well, I'm coming to it. Shut up. Of course, he had to have a gun to reenact it with. And who do you suppose supplied it? Who? Peter B. Hartman, B for brain. No, I'm not kidding. 
The sheriff gave his gun to the professor. The professor gave it an Earl, and Earl shot the professor right in the belly. The professor's in the hospital. Williams has evaporated, and the sheriff's gone nuts. Ain't it perfect? <laughs> Fine work, you leave. Save the pilot. I want that money. 260 bucks. No, I tell you, I'm not going to cover anything else. I'm going away. Listen, that's the money I'm going to get married on. I just did this as a personal favor. I'm going to leave town tonight. Listen, I gave Jacoby every cent I had at... Well, all right, when will you send it over? <laughs> right away. Well, I'm well, down to hurry. I'll wait from here. Okay. Oh, hello, Peggy. How are you, darling? What was that? Oh, I was just telling Walter I was through, that's all. You haven't done something foolish with our money? Oh, no, no. Then I think I'd better take care of it from now on. Oh, now, listen, sweetheart, everything's going to be perfectly all right. And you haven't got it? Well, no, not right now, but he's going to send it over. Walter, I mean, the boy will be here any minute. Oh, kill me. Listen, honey, I wouldn't have had this happen for the world. Look, if this is what happened, I would... I know. Well, I can't tell you if you won't listen. I had to give Jacoby the money so he wouldn't give the story to the other papers. Every time I wanted you for something. My birthday. New Year's Eve when I waited up till five in the morning. Oh, I know, but a big story broke. It's always a big story. The biggest story in the world. And the next day, everybody's forgotten it, even you. What do you mean, forgotten? That was the Clara Hammond murder on your birthday. Oh, for heaven's sake, Peggy, it won't hurt to wait just a few minutes, and the boy's on his way with the money now. Mother's downstairs in a taxi. I'm just ashamed to face her. If she knew about that money. It's all we've got in the world, Hilly. We haven't even got a place to sleep except the train. Listen, honey, I'll tell you what we'll do. You and Mother go and have the baggage checked. There are the tickets. You mean you're not coming? Sure, I'm coming. I'll meet you at the information booth. It's all that Walter Byrd. You simply can't resist it. Sam, I wouldn't raise a finger if he was dying. McHugh talking. Oh, hello, Mac. Dear, this is Mr. McHugh. Mac, this is my girl. Pleased to meet you. Here's a feature of the man hunt that'll knock you right on you. Excuse me, miss. Wait a second, honey. Mrs. Phoebe DeWolf, 861 and a half South Euclid Street, color. Well, she became the mother of a pickaninny in a patrol wagon with Sheriff Hartman's rifle squad acting as nurses. Uh -huh. Oh, you should have seen him, miss. <laughs> Come on, dear, we'll put our things in the cab. <laughs> well, Phoebe was walking along the street when all of a sudden she began... Right. So they coaxed her into the patrol wagon and started a race with the store. When the piccaninny was born, the rifle squad examined him carefully to see if it was Earl Williams, who they knew was hiding somewhere. <laughs> they named the kid Peter Hartman de Wolf in honor of the sheriff. <laughs> and they all pitched in a dollar apiece on account of it being the first baby ever born on a manhunt. <laughs> Wait a minute. Here's the mayor himself. Maybe there's a statement. Don't pester me now, please. I have a lot on my mind. His daughter won't say anything. Have you seen your apartment? No. What effect is this jailbreak going to have on the colored voters? Not an iota. In what way can an unavoidable misfortune of this sort influence the duty of every citizen, colored or otherwise? Ah, uh, oh, you're right. Tell me, is there a red menace array there? Hartman, I've been looking for you. So have we. What's the dope, Pinky? Who engineered this getaway? Just a minute, fellas. We got him located. Williams? Where? Where he used to live. The rifle squad just started now. You can catch him if you hurry. Pete! I want to talk to you. I ain't got time for it, honest. I I'll see you after. Pete! Did you actually give Williams that gun? Well, the professor asked me for it. I thought it was for something scientific. Pete! Uh... Kruger calling. Here's a red-hot statement from the governor. The governor says the mayor and the sheriff have shown themselves to be a couple of eight-year-olds playing with fire. Quote them as follows. It's a good thing for the city that next Tuesday is election day, as the citizens will thus be saved the expense of impeaching the mayor and the sheriff. That's all. Hi, Your Honor. Hey. I've got a mighty unpleasant task to perform. You're just going to get me rattled, Fred. 
court in 400 deputies. Do you want to bankrupt this administration? But I'm getting for only $12 a night. $12 for those romantic comforts of yours. Out there, shooting up everybody they can see for the fun of it, but... Pete, you're through. Now, don't appear to my sentimental sir. I don't know what to say, Fred. A, a thing of this kind almost ruins a man's faith in human nature. Pete! And our families, Fred. I've always looked on Betty as my own sister. If there was any way out. But there is a way out. Just give me a couple hours, will you? <laughs> Hello. For a hundred suppers, nothing doing. This is a manhunt, not a banquet. That twelve dollars covers everything. That gives you an idea what I'm up against. We're up against a lot more than that with that nutty slogan you invented. Reform the Reds with a rope. <laughs> it's for me. I'm Sheriff Hartman. You looking for me? You certainly are a hard man to find. Mm -hmm. I've been what looking... What do you want? I'm a messenger at the State House. This is from the Governor. What's from the Governor? The reprieve for Earl Williams. For whom? Earl Williams, the reprieve. And the Governor gave me his word of honor that he wouldn't interfere two days ago. And you fell for it. Pete, it frightens me what I'd like to do to you. He's gone. Wouldn't shoot. Was there anybody here for me? No, Mr. John. Oh, that double-crossing louse. Everything will be all right. Now, don't worry. All we want to do is to ask you a couple of questions. The trouble is nobody's using the right psychology of... You got 260 bucks? No, sir. But I got a way of making it. And more. Search a la femme. What? Who is it that's been defending Williams? Hanging around. Oh, I ain't got time for that trip. I gotta get 260 bucks in the next five minutes. Take longer than five minutes to get it. I know where Williams is. Sure, he's out getting his head blown off with a rifle squad, but that'll get me my dough. He's with that girl, Malinois. That's where... Oh, shut up! Remember, you never delivered this. You got caught in the traffic jam or something. Don't let anybody see you. Yeah, but how do I know? Come and see me at my office tomorrow. What is your name? You can get anything you want. Tell them Fred sent you. Okay, Fred. You imagine wooden shoes? This kind of motor had to be a gentleman. I'm asking you, you got the dough. Huh? He said I'm a lot of roses, didn't he? Yeah. Stick your roses. Come on, we have in a hurry. I'll bet you I'm right. Oh, you. No, not you. Hey, look, what are you talking about? The one I sent you over here? Sure, in case you needed me help. Yeah, we I know, but 260 bucks. What's the 260 bucks? The money I spent on the story. Warner promised to send it over, but I can't wait, so... So what? Listen, Louie, you almost got a lot of dough on you. Oh, so you want the premier? Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't know. It's a lot of money, you know what I mean? Oh, Louie, my whole future depends on this. My girl's waiting at the plane. We're going to New York tonight. I've only got 15 minutes. If you help me out in this, I swear that I'll... Look, look, Walter is going to give it to me the works. He'll leave my help you turn out on him. Oh, no, he knows I'm going. I just did him a swell favor and we're pals again. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do with you. I'm going to take the chance. Oh, yeah, that's the stuff. I want that boy to give the water and you can get the money for him. And You're a white man, Lee. Tell you what I'll do. I'll give you 150 bucks for the debt. Hey, wait a minute. That's taking advantage. Well, it's the best of what I can do. Now it was almost a hundred bucks that way. That's one hundred and ten, you loser. Hey, Louie, give me two hundred, will you? One hundred and fifty. All right, give me the dough. Hey, Wiz. Hey, look. What he says on here? Well, you read what he says on there. Oh, sure, that's right. <laughs> well, goodbye and good luck. Oh, I'm going to look you up in New York if there's anything wrong with this. You know what I mean? Ten, twenty, thirty, four. Ten, twenty, twenty-five, thirty, thirty... 
ten front. Oh, well, anyway, I get out of this place next. After me. With searchlight. Put down that gun. It ain't loaded. I fired all the bullets already. I surrender. I couldn't hang off of the roof any longer. I ain't afraid to die. I was telling the fellow that when he handed me the gun, waking me up in the middle of the night, talking to me about things they don't understand, calling me a Bolshevik. I'm an anarchist. It's got nothing to do with bombs. It's the philosophy that guarantees every man freedom. All those poor people being crushed by the system. And the boys, the boys that were killed in the war and in the slums. All of those slaves do a crust of bread. I can hear them crying. Shut up a second, will you? Go on. Go on, take me back. Hang me. I got my bed. Give me water burns, quick. Yeah, right. Hello. Oh, hello, Peggy. Now listen, dear, please, something terrific has happened. Don't start to phone me out now. Wait a minute, will you? Hello, Walter. Listen, Hildy, come over here right away. Hold the line a minute. Now listen, Peggy, please, now. I'm an awful jam. Don't start to phone me out now, please, honey. Wait a minute, will you? Walter, get this. I can only say this once. I just captured Earl Williams here in the press room. Yeah, honest, hurry over here. I need you. Right. Hello, Peggy, please. Listen, dear, this is the greatest thing that's ever happened. Wait till I tell you. I just captured Earl Williams, the murderer. Yeah, right. Wait a minute. Please don't tell anybody, honey. I know. But listen, something terrific has happened. It's the greatest thing in my life, honey. Wait. Hold the line. Never more. Wait a minute, Molly. You got him surrounded someplace. Gonna shoot him like a dog. Get out of here, Molly. They're looking for you two of your smart, so get out of here. Tell me where they've gone. I ain't afraid of them, the yellow murderers. Wait, I'm making them first. Oh. Who is it? Me. I've got a clue. I'll be right with you, wooden shoes. Get back in there. What is this? Double crime? I'm trying to save him. This is very important. Keep him quiet. Now, that's a cop, and I'll get rid of him. Hello, wooden shoes. Here for the roses, Molly. How'd you get here? I came down the rain pipe. I didn't mean to shoot him. I don't know what happened. But you can't stay here. They'll get you. I don't care anymore. Well, you gotta hide. Rats. No, don't do anything. I'm ready to go. I don't care. It's better to die for a cause than the way most people die for no reason. Oh, you won't die. They'll never get you. I ain't important. It's humanity that's important. Like I told you, Molly, humanity is a wonderful thing. No, it ain't. They're just dirty murderers. Look what they've done to you. And to me. And that's because they don't know any better. You're too good for them, that's why. You're, you're good, too. Me? Yeah. I think you're wonderful. I wrote out a statement today and left it with the warden. So that when I was dead, people would understand what I meant. There was a lot about you in it. I said you were the most beautiful character I ever met. Yeah? So this is the time for you to print my theory of crime prevention. Okay, you run along and write it out for me. Hurry up, will you? The fellas are coming. There's no place else. Coming, Mike. Murphy calling. 
Give me the desk. Any news? I was never so tired in my life. They surrounded the house, but Williams wasn't there. No, 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 William, get call your bank. Oh, what a chase. Mr. Trade? Kruger, Paulie. I'm out with Sheriff Hoffman's deputy. Yeah, I'm at a drugstore. Well, call me back if you don't believe me. Come on, come on, operator. Fitzroy, 2500. Molly, can't you flop somewhere else? Mmm, smell. Mmm, bloody smoothie. <laughs> Makes me passionate. Look out, she'll start bothering again. Well, why don't you let her alone? Say, when did you two get so chummy? Told us he was interviewing her. You back in the job again? Uh, oh, Sarge, McHugh, anything doing? You still here? Trying to hang something on us, if you ask me. Well, I'm waiting for water. I promised to send a guy over with some dough. Hey, this looks good. An old lady just phoned the detective bureau and claims Earl Williams is hiding under her piazza. Tell her to stand up. <laughs> <laughs> well, just the same, fellas. That sounds like a pretty good tip. Shall we go out on it? Oh. Hey, I'll cover this end for you. Don't let Stewarty boy go out. Who we'll pulled the shades down? Molly likes it that way. Hey, I got a hunch Williams ain't any place they've been looking for him. He might be right here in this building. Sure, hang on like a duck in a shooting gallery, I suppose. Bright guy. Now, there's the skylight he got out of. But how could he get from there to the ground? I'm pretending to raid in here, Williams. Look, he'd have jumped over to this roof. That's only about four feet. Yeah, once he got on this roof, he could slide down the rain pipe and come in any of the windows on this side. Well, if the story's going to walk right in the window... Well, the masterminds that work. Why don't you guys go home? Williams will probably call on you. Well, there must be something in what Ed says, or they'd certainly have nabbed Williams by now. The whole city's inside out looking for him. Well, if he came in this building, it's a cinch he's still here. There hasn't been a chance for a flea to get through those cops downstairs. Unless it's one that fell off of the sheriff. What's happened? Oh, you're still here, Johnson. <laughs> Thought you were going to New York. <laughs> Is this the only place you can find to sit in? This chair and this desk are my property, and I won't have anybody using it. Anybody. What are you looking for, Roy? I forgot my ass. Oh, we don't want to get asked for it. It's bad for your heart. It is really? Yeah. I've noticed palpitations every time I've taken some. What's the matter, Roy? You're sick? Sick. Say, if I haven't got the grip coming on, I miss my guess. Get some tonsilline. Tonsilline? Yep. Never heard of it. Did he go? Oh, it's great. It broke up my core in five minutes. Five minutes? Five minutes. Five minutes? Yep. What was the name? Tonsilline, P for taffy, O for ox, and N for nuts. Get the tonsilline. I know how to spell it. Any drugstore? Any drugstore. I'll get me some. Oh. That drinking cup. <clears throat> well, I wish water get here. My dough. <clears throat> Hey, speaking about dough, there's a ten grand reward for that guy, Williams. Let's get the cops and search the building. What do you say? Hey, wouldn't it be funny if we found him right here in the building? Supposing he is here in the building. The cops would grab the reward, we wouldn't get a smell. That's right. Listen, let's all grab a floor. Whoever finds him, we'll split the reward. I'll stay here. Uh, I don't know about that. Get my sunset blown off. What else is it good for? Besides, he can't hurt anybody. Oh, come on, Mac. Now listen, Mother, don't you mother me. If you've got anything to say for yourself, after keeping us at that station all this time, you come downstairs and say to Peggy. I'll be there in five minutes. No, sir. I don't move out of here without you. But I already told Peggy. I know. A lot of gibberish about a murder. No, I... I don't care if you did catch him. You come with me this moment. I'm fine. You're something stuck around here. Who said he caught him? What do you mean you caught him? I don't know what she's talking about. I didn't say anything of the kind. Yes, you did. Never told her that. Oh, I said I was trying to catch him. You see, Mother, you got it all balled up. What do you know about it? How do you know he didn't? Let's go! Hilly and she were here together. Yeah. She's the one that knows. What do you mean? Touché la femme. Where is Daryl Williams? How should I know? Where is he? Come to me before we knock it out. Pardon, Jimmy. Who are you trying to cross? Wait! You stool pigeon! He doesn't know where Williams is. I'm the one that knows. What do you mean, you know? Go find out, you heel. You don't think I'm gonna tell? We'll make you. Let her alone, she's goofy. She ain't too goofy to know where Williams is. Put out of the door. No, you ain't getting out of here. 
Now, where is it? Where are you hiding? I ain't gonna squeal. I ain't gonna. You gotta tell her we'll shake it out of you. Wanna have us call the cops and give you the boot? Come on, wouldn't you? Slap it out of her. Where is he? Before I hurt you. Don't you come near me, you kidney butt. Keep away. Keep away from me. I'll knock your head down. Put down that chair. Get her out. Get on the side of her. No, you don't. You'll never get out of me. I'll never tell. Never. Slap her. Come on, bud. Oh, gee, the poor kid. Water, did you see that? Yes. Where is he? She jumped out the window. I know. Where is he, I said? Oh, anyway, she ain't dead. Come to, Hilly. Where do you have William? Huh? He's in the desk. Oh, the poor kid. Let me out. I can't stand it. Keep quiet. You're sitting pretty. What's the matter? That? That's my girl's mother. What are you doing? Shut up. I won't shut up. That girl killed herself. Oh, you're doing something wrong. What's in there? Louis, take this lady over to Polak Mike's and lock her up. And see that she doesn't talk to anyone on the way. What's that? What's that? Take her out the back way. Tell Mike it's a case of delirium treatment. Oh, this is going to get me in a terrible jam. Oh, shoot. Anything you say, boss. <laughs> now, don't worry, mother. This is only temporary. Where do you think you're going? Go out and get my girl. Your girl. What are you, some killing college boy? Why, well, in time of war, you could be shot for what you're doing now, for less. Screw that, your story. Smear it all over the front page. Burn away and stop by the morning post and take all the credit. I covered your story and I covered it right. Now I'm getting out of here. Why, you drooling saphead, what do you mean a story? You've got the whole thing by the seat of the pants. I know, but... You know, you've got the brain of a pancake. Listen, Jilly, if I didn't have your interest at heart, would I be wasting time arguing with you now? You've done something big. you stepped into a new class. What? Why, we'll make such monkeys out of those war dealers that nobody will vote for them, not even their wives. Expose them, man. Huh? Crucify them. We're going to keep you under cover till morning so the post can break the story exclusive. Then we'll let the governor and the captain share the glory with them. I see, I see. You kicked over the whole city hall like an apple cart. You've got the mayor and Hartman backed against the wall. You put one administration out and another one in. Why, this isn't a newspaper story, it's a career. And you stand there belly aching about some girl. Well, yeah, I wasn't thinking about it that way, I guess. We were the white-haired boys, do we? Why, they'll be naming streets after you. Johnson Street. You and I and the governor are going to run this town. Yeah, can't think Williams here. What are the governor's... Carry more of my private office. Where's our telephone? That one. Right over there. How are you going to take him out there? See him. Not if he's inside the desk, we'll carry it over. Can't do that. Swarm of cops outside. We'll lower it out of the way. We'll pull it. Hilly. What's that into it? Got the machine stuff running out of the way. What you want? All the ways you got. Where's the paper? Hello. Give me Duffy. Hello. Can I call the mayor down for the bank? Call the lunch time if you want. Duffy. How about the time you had the house about the fire? Give him the work. Hello, Duffy. Get set. We've got the biggest story in the world. Earl Williams caught for the post exclusive. Then word down to Butchman Jerk. I want ten huskies to lamb right over here. Press room, kill a court building. What you'll get that desk off? Nothing's ever stopped those boys. Well, they start shooting. Fine. Now listen, Duffy. I want you to tear out the whole front page. That's what I said. The whole front page. Out. Johnson's running the lead. Tell me. What the devil do you want? Tell me. Miss, you can't come in here. Take the Chinese earthquake. Wait a minute, Duffy. Now look here, little girl. You're doing this to him. He was going and you stopped him. Listen, dear, something terrific has happened. I was going to tell you, but I couldn't. Tell her nothing. She's a woman, you fool. I'm not going to let you do it. You're coming right now. Holy jumping. Johnny, this is the biggest chance of my life. Keep quiet. You don't want to marry me, that's all. That isn't true. Just because you won't listen to me and say I don't love you. When you know I cut off my hands, boy, I'd do anything for you, anything in the world. What, Duffy? What? Jump the League of Nations. Break it. You never intended to be decent and live like a human being. You are lying all the time. Well, all right, then, if that's what you think. Take the bastion, jumping, try to concentrate. Oh, I see what you are now. Just a robber. What's him? Sure, that's why. I am. Oh, leave the roof to study along. That's your mattress. You're just a hearty, selfish animal without any feelings. It's all your fault. And if you think I'm going to put it... Shut up, will you? Let me talk to 